Okay. So, um, I'm a photographer, so I thought that I'd talk about how to take a photograph. Now, we all know pretty much how to take a photograph, whether it's on a phone or on a cheap digital camera or on a more expensive digital camera. So, obviously, we always have the shutter, everyone knows that, and to take the lens cap off, that's something that I forget quite a lot, which is embarrassing. So, once you've got the lens cap off, um, there's always a viewfinder, which I always prefer actually looking through the camera because I think that you can feel a bit more connected to what you're taking a photograph of. So you can you look through the camera and then there's always the sh shutter button in about the same place. So that's all the basics that we generally know. So I was going to talk a bit more about um, how to manually alter the, how much light's going into the camera. So there's on film cameras you buy a different type of speed of film, so that might be a 200 or a 400, and that's the sensitivity of the film. Um, a 200 being less sensitive and a 400 being more sensitive. The more sensitive it is, it means it's going to let, well, it's going to be more sensitive to the light. So if you know that you're going to be photographing in England during the summer, you probably need a more sensitive film because the weather's shit. Whereas if you're photographing in Madrid in the summer, you probably need a faster film like at 100. Um, on a digital camera, uh, you don't, you're not bound to one film for kind of 36 shots. You've got a button where you can just change it. So that's the ISO. Um, depending on what camera you have, you have a whole range of ISOs. So it works in the same way. So like a, a low number, like 100 or 50, is less sensitive. So that's for bright conditions, a sunny day, or if you're using lights. And, um, the higher the number goes, the more sensitive it becomes. The more sensitive it becomes, the grainier the image becomes. On film, I always feel like it becomes grainier, but on digital, I feel like it becomes a bit more fabricy. So sometimes you might like that kind of effect, but if you want a nice, crisp image, then you always want to have a nice, low ISO. Um, so you've got the ISO, and then you've also got the shutter speed. Um, so the shutter speed is like blinking, so it says it's how quickly the camera opens and closes. Um, so if it opens for longer, it's going to be letting in more light, and if it opens for a short time, it's going to be really brief. So if you're taking pictures of a game of football, you probably want a really fast shutter speed so that it just catches it, the ball midair or someone midair. <clears throat> Whereas Sometimes you can't always have such a fast shutter speed because it might be dark. So if you're taking something and it's really atmospheric and it's dark, maybe it's in your bedroom and you've only got a bedside lamp, lamp on, you're going to have probably already put the ISO quite high so that it's more sensitive. And you're probably going to have to have quite a slow shutter speed. Um, they always say that you shouldn't go below 60 because after that it starts to pick up your wobbly hand. But that depends how, you know... What's the word? I don't know how still you can be. <laughs> how steady your hand is. I always like to push it to 30, and if I'm feeling, you know, cocky, then maybe 15. Sometimes you can get a lens with uh, image stabilisation, which means you can even go to 10. Uh, and it can stay focused. So that's the shutter speed. Um, then the third thing that you... The third factor... Uh, is the aperture. Now the aperture is the part of the lens which opens and closes a bit like the pupil in your eye. So, so when you're in a dark situation, you, the pup your pupil opens to let more light, light in and if it's really bright, your pupil closes to a pinprick um, unless you're on drugs. And so the camera works in the same way. Uh, if it's a dark situation, you want the aperture to be nice and open so that it's letting lots of light in. The more open the aperture is, it's also going to alter the depth of field. So the more open the aperture, the shorter the depth of field, which is what you get in like a, if you're taking a portrait of someone, you want them to be in focus, but everything behind them to be nice and blurred so it really draws your eye to them. Then you want a nice wide aperture now. It's funny because actually the lower the number, the wider the aperture rather than the other way around. So a 1.8 is a really low aperture, it's nice and wide, but whereas like a 15 is a very, you know, small, 
you know, it's tiny, <laughs> it's a pinprick, um, but it's a higher number. So, so you've got the aperture of the ISO and the shutter speed, and you can play them all off against each other. So if you're taking something which is really action and you need to capture them without them blurring, then you're going to prioritise having a high shutter speed and you're going to alter the ISO sensitivity of the film or the camera um, accordingly and the aperture accordingly. Or if you're, like I said, taking a portrait of someone, you're going to prioritise having a nice open aperture um, and alter everything else. So they all kind of work together. Um, I've probably bored you enough with that. So... I'll probably stop there.